All right, folks. Sorry to keep you back a couple of minutes. Thanks very much for uh, coming along tonight. We know some of these, everybody's got other things to do, but uh, well, welcome uh, for the Banana Community Forum. Um, if you could just introduce, we've got Shona McKenzie and Sharon Shields just taking some minutes for us. Ian Lane, Park Manager, uh, Lower Meadows Country Park. I'm on my back, Treasurer of the Forum. John Drummond, who's uh, who our chair tonight. Uh, we, we sort of thought we would get somebody sort of impartial to come along rather than uh, somebody for the Forum or Community Council or something like that. So John uh, he has got a wee bit of expertise uh, in business ethics and corporate responsibility. Uh, he's published a couple of books. Um, it's good business and managing business ethics. He was a board advisor to the ING Group based in Amsterdam and provided expert input uh, to the board's international companies. Uh, he's a former director of Honeywell and Middleton Bank. And in 2015, John joined the board of Capital Housing Associates in a London-based so social housing group. So. That's our, our chair for tonight. Uh, so then he began my heart. Councillor Campbell, Councillor Hood. We've got, uh, sorry, <coughs> Gavin yep. from Property Services. So um, I can also ask if we could maybe put your phones on silent, folks. Just again, we'll. Uh, well, I think we've done it, but if you don't mind. We've, we've, we asked on, I know most of these, or some of these are on social media, but we'd, we'd asked for people just to save a bit of time to give us some questions. I know there'll be hundreds of questions, probably a lot of them will be the same. I think we'll be five or six questions that have been posted to Lorna. Uh, these people are going to get to ask their question, but that'll, be, that'll well open up. Uh, we're lucky the night, the Institute had gave us a hall, they're usually closed on a Monday, but they, they opened it up for us because we couldn't get other places. Um, we did ask uh, a lot of people along tonight, we actually phoned somebody for the trust today. Um, they've not sent anybody along and that was one of the, the groups, organisations that should have been here to answer some questions. But we decided not to come, we've got Ian. Ian's an employee, an employee of us. We were looking for somebody to the board. Oh, yeah, they should have been here, but they fine. Um, Chris Broom, the chief executive, has only come on board, so he probably couldn't answer some of the uh, a lot of the questions. So uh, again, thanks for coming. I'm just going to hand you over to, to well, yeah. If I know there'll be. I'll be um, here to exchange, guys. Can we try and just, uh, we're all adults, and just try and uh, <coughs> keep it civilised. We didn't want to just be halfway through closing meetings, and we're all here for one purpose and one purpose only. All right? Uh, it, the forum put a, a community forum put a letter into the Times um, just to get two or three points uh, answered. Uh, one of them has been answered, but just to the forum, not to yourselves. Um, and it sort of grew a wee bit, people's uh, quite rightly so, looking for answers. So we hope we can get most, if not all, the answers uh, tonight. Um, so I've got to hand you over to John uh, to open up, uh, and hopefully we'll uh, get everything answered tonight. Thanks. Yeah, thanks very much. Um, I'd like to also extend the welcome uh, to everyone here, obviously, uh, uh, as, as has been said. It's a tremendous tribute that, uh, that people do turn out uh, and uh, are interested in community projects. This isn't always the case, I can tell you. And uh, I think Lorna said she was expecting around about two or twelve people, so, so you've exceeded her expectations. I'd also like to include in the welcome... Uh, uh, Councillor Mary Lockhart, whom I see at the back, and uh, Annabel Ewing, MSP. Welcome both. 
<coughs> if I missed anyone out, uh, <laughs> sorry, yes, <laughs> Councillor Anne Bain, if you beg, beg your pardon, there. My apologies. <laughs> And uh, as been said, uh, the aim of the meeting this evening is to gather your questions, concerns and comments uh, and to elicit responses where possible. I, uh, let, let's not uh, assume that every <laughs> single question can get an answer tonight. I suspect what is important though is to make sure that those questions and those concerns are raised and limited uh, by Shona and Sharon so that there is a clear record of the concerns that people people do have. <clears throat> right. I just want to make one last point. Uh, we've only got 90 minutes, slightly less now, uh, and we ought to aim to garner as much of your concerns as we can. <coughs> and I'll suggest to you this is best done in an atmosphere of courtesy as well as candour. So with those few <laughs> introductory remarks, I'd like to uh, ask for the first question. I know, but uh, I think it would be helpful if you have a question, if you could uh, please stand and uh, say who you are uh, and state the nature of your question, please. Yes, sir. Hi, John Martin, the Lord. I've been here for over many years. I've used the mayor as quite very left for a and so on. And I was a member of the community council at the time, and I represented the advisory committee. Ah, over made his country part. But through time, it's gradually disappeared. So the transparency that we had at that particular time is no longer here. <coughs> so the said that we set something up in the group, and there were various groups that they included in it. But uh, to my knowledge, it never materialised. I, I, I wouldn't represent the community council, obviously the ring members. The gentleman who was there in the back, that was her. The other one involved in any taking place, and I spoke to him, personally I spoke to him, but I'm far too happy about everything that's going to be done. When I read the article and the curiosity of the size of the building, but only the new building that's been up, it's only a third of the size, according to the Dyke and Brian usually did his homework. And I, I question that because well, on one hand we're saying that that many people coming in to the mayors, that's more than ever, and yet we're reducing the size of the main building to a third of the size. It doesn't make sense. Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> that's a question about the reduction of the size of the facility. <coughs> um, there was a question from over here. Perhaps we could take two questions together and we can try and get through as many as we possibly can. Yes, sir, there was a question over here. Yeah, James Thompson, farmer that farms on the side of the, the lock on the county side and also on the advisory board. Um, I've got to apologise, I missed the March meeting, but it was at the January meeting and this building was discussed. Um, and then it was to be followed on by another meeting as soon as... and. That one was in March, but after that, there has been no meeting of the board since that. And all this we have read in the paper um, about what's all happening, when it's happening, and the size of the building has been questioned already. And it worries me why build a smaller building than it's already there. Uh, I know what came out at the board meeting in January was that we were needing a bigger restaurant and a better restaurant and you're now not going to have that um, and could I ask the question why has the board been kept in the dark regarding this building and all of a sudden it all seems to happen and it worries me that we're sitting on a board looking at this on behalf of all you people in here so I just want to make you aware of the fact that we knew, know that much about this building and we haven't been involved in any meetings since March till tonight. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anyone here to 
shed some light on the fact that uh, there hasn't been a board meeting and uh, uh, a lack of council Ian could address the board meeting. Okay. Yeah. The difficulty for, for the trust in, in forming these meetings is that the board is chaired by the chief executive of Fife Post and Countryside Trust. The chief executive of the trust stood down at the end of March 2016. Uh, an interim chairman then took over, who lasted about a month. Then there was a down period when there was nobody. Then another interim manager came on, chief executive came on, who also lasted about a month. <laughs> Then they appointed another interim chief executive of the trust who has recently gone off for a month on leave and returned three weeks ago as the full time chief executive of the trust. So, as the person who would normally convene these medical meetings, there has been no chief executive since March to, to call the meetings, basically. Well, can I just say that there's somebody obviously been there high enough in a position to strings and meet the sound, so I think that's what we Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you not hear a vice? Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Sorry, could you stand sir? Give us your name. The, the man sitting there saying there doesn't need to be high enough to, to through the decisions for the board meeting. Mm -hmm. Somebody obviously been putting the strings and making decisions for this ball to be going ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, it seems to be a reasonable point, and it was, it was also made over here, which is that it may be the case when the chief executive changes, and that's, I have to say, the frequency with which chief executives have changed <laughs> makes my head spin. But uh, the fact of the matter is, there ought to be somebody to whom the chief executive reports, or someone who reports to the chief executive who could have stood in. The chief uh, executive would report to the board, or board subgroup of Five Coast and Countryside Trust. So, uh, so I don't and, that's, and that's the board that hasn't met? Is that right? No, the board has met. This is this, the group that uh, I think James and, uh, is referring to. It's called the advisory group. Right, okay. So it's the, sorry, it's the advisory group sir, that you, you're concerned about. Or is it about yeah. not meeting? Okay. <laughs> but you're talking about the actual board that makes the decisions. Is that right? To which the advisory group provides information? The chief executive would, would chair the advisory group above him as a board. Right. Is, is that board represented here tonight? No, no, they don't decline to go. I think that. Just one wee minute. Just, just a wee the, the reason I've, I phoned, like, Lorna had sent an email to invite him. It was very unfair on Chris Broom, who's just taken over as chief executive because he's not only been in the picture. The person that should have been sitting here for the trust. Is Amanda McFarlane. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Appointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She, was, she was fully everything when she first got appointed, what she was going to do. And I think she was there for about three years, and I'll tell you what she done. She done nothing. No. Absolutely nothing. The Fife Council put a million pound up. It was to be match funding. Mm -hmm. Then it got brought down to six hundred thousand pounds. Then three hundred thousand pounds, and then none. The trust have put not one single penny. That's the questions that should be answered to, I know Amanda McFarlane doesn't with the trust anymore, but the board, the trustees, should have been here to answer the questions. I'd like to say, Chairman, that I've been very sore on Amanda McFarlane. She did quite a strong job and okay. it was, she came out... Chairman, she's, not here to, she's not here to defend herself. No, so no, can't, no, can't no. Sorry, what, Peter, did you say you, you wanted to make a comment on the, the board? And the, it's well, like, I mean, all I was going to say is that most of the advisory reporters are here, a lot of the advisory reporters are here. I mean, the three councillors are here. Uh, uh, I think the point, isn't it, that Ian's making is that it, 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 it was the other board because they the, 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 the long jump. Sorry, my impression is that it's, it was the advisory board no. where, where the difficulties were. The, the, the difficulties appear to be... The CEO would chair the board meeting, the, the advisory group meetings, but there's been no consistent CEO to okay. that people. Okay. But the CEO is appointed by whom? By the board. By the board. <laughs> oh, no, <I'll> right. <laughs> <laughs> there, must be, there must be a board or an executive uh, to whom the, the board is responsible. Who is that? In the hierarchy, so that, so that people here understand who is responsible here. I mean, for example, if I'm the chief executive and I fall ill, 
then there is a group of people in charge who say, in the interim, well, he's not here, we're going to appoint Bill Blount or Joe Blount. So who is responsible for that? The council will know. They get paid so far. Yeah, council will know. To, to whom, who is responsible for the chief executive and the, the board that he operates? So, so, the, so the, the, the board, the five posts in the they trust, right. reports, well, they don't report, they're a separate legal entity in themselves. But the sole owner of the five posts in the they trust is Fife Council. Fife Council, okay. Uh, at Fife Council, the person that is responsible within Fife Council, the manager, is the area services manager from okay. Grant Ward. So who is, sorry? Grant Ward. Sam Ward. Grant, Grant. 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 Yeah. Is Grant here tonight? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, it might be helpful if Grant were here tonight. Because it's, it's, I mean, what, what, what we're trying to get to here, the, the issue that we're trying to address is why was there no advisory meetings and why wasn't there the consultation during well, that period? Because that, that's that, the issue. That, that's one of the issues. I think there may well yeah. be other issues. I'm sure there are. That's a big issue because that meant that the council was going to be kept in, 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 heavily involved either, which should have been happening. And I cannot, for the life of me, see why the uh, countryside trust couldn't have had somebody coming along to chair the meetings. I mean, chair the meetings isn't a, a, a difficult job. Let me, let me ask a question. So, the so, so, where does the funding for this, the countryside trust come from? Okay, the council. So the council is ultimately responsible. Is that yes. Yes. Okay. So, 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 so that means that the area services manager, Brad Ward, at some stage must report to the chief executive of the council. Somewhere. Is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And that chief executive of the five council is responsible to the councillors. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, so I uh, what I seem to be getting is that five council funds the trust, right? And five council put up money towards the new builder or whatever it is, but the trust has it. So, five council say. Right, so I'll give you a million pounds. Um, I've also given you a million pounds. You've got that million pounds towards this building. Well, I think that's what we're trying to unravel. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. There was a question over here, and then we'll, we'll take some more. Mr. Chairman, I wonder if you could help us out here. We get telling the committee, the trust, and people, there'll be names involved. Can anybody tell us who these people are? Yes, yeah. the faceless would not know who they are. Well, we, you're having sure. difficulty keeping track of the chairman. No, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the chief executive would tell us. Can we get the names? We, we don't know the names. Well, this, these must be on record somewhere. Sorry, John, yeah. can I just ask you? The names of what? Is it the advisory board you want the names? No, the committees. Yeah. It's got to this committee and it goes to that committee. Who are right. these committees? Well, Nobody like is a name. Well, but, but let me tell you what my understanding is, based on all I've heard tonight, is that uh, there is a nice man called Ian Lang, who's kindly agreed to come along the line, and he's explained to us that uh, ultimately uh, there is a group called the Countryside Trust that depends on, for its funding upon Fife Council, i.e. the councillors determine uh, that, that level of funding, is that right? Yep. Uh, that the individual responsible for liaison between Fife Council and the Countryside Trust, and Ian ultimately reports into that system, has had a rapidly changing Chief Executive, uh, and the individual responsible within Fife Council for liaison, supervision, I assume, yep. uh, is Grant Ward. Yep. Grant Ward. So, if, if, in terms of names, we know how, how the system works. Okay? Is yeah. that clear? Yeah. That there is Fife Council at the top. Ultimately, further down, there is a, a, an area supervisor uh, called Grant Ward, and Grant Ward is responsible for the supervision of the countries I trust. Is that right? Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Okay. So that's that's the way it works. Okay. But the cost, sorry, just to be clear. Concentrate trust is a separate legal entity. I understand. So I understand. There's no, well, there's no yeah, like line management I understand. There's no line management, but there is a funding management. Yeah. In other words, they would not exist without the funding from Fife Council. Yeah. Do you get revenue as well? 
that generate revenue. They generate their own revenue, but in terms of what we're talking about tonight, which is the actual construction of a new facility, yeah. they depend entirely upon that on five Council, is that right? One grant. In grants. In grants. From Sports Scotland. Scotland, etc. But Fife Council is the management entity. No. No. It's the cultural trust manager. It's a we, the council can give the trust money. Right. But, the, but legally, the council couldn't tell the trust what to do because the trust is. An 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 it's known as an arm's length organisation. You'll probably be aware. Okay. It seems to me a lot of the difficulty here tonight is, and the reason that people are concerned, is because they feel that somehow the countryside trust has gotten. Slightly out of control. In other words, am I right? Yeah. 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 So, uh, yeah. So, so, so the, the, issue, the issue then is that it's difficult to see for me to see how folks are going to be uh, uh, feel better about this unless they've got a clear sense of uh, how how the management of the countryside trust operates and to whom it ultimately reports. <coughs> I mean, who is, who is on the board? So, 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 sorry, just yeah, the yeah, okay, fire away. Yeah, so, just to explain, so, the, the, the Coastal Concentrate Trust is an arm's length organisation yeah. who operate a, a, a number of facilities around the right. Fife based, uh, you know, effectively right. for the council. Okay. So, what happens is we, uh, there's what's known as a management fee whereby the council provide money right. to okay. them okay. and they okay. operate and run okay. these facilities. When the money was originally allocated for these new buildings, it was explicit that the Fife Coastal Countryside Trust would take up and deliver that project programme and development within the park. Okay. So it, it, if you go back to the budget papers okay. in 2014, okay. you'll see in there the allocation of the money and you'll also see specific reference to the, to, to the de development of, of, of that. And I, I can answer that question. What was originally proposed is that the, the funding would be matched or additional funds would be leveraged in. That's what we've done in other areas. So where we put money in and we give it to an arms length organisation, they then normally have a funding body. Just one last, one last question before I go to the president. Just two seconds. Are you happy with the management of the Fife and Country, Coastal and Countryside Trust? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Yes? Is it not the case that uh, the council... Sorry, your name, I guess. Is it not the case that the trust was brought out because they could get um, funding because they had trust status as well as what the council could get them. So therefore, it would be easier for them to march money. Thank you very much. But to march march money, they have done. Okay, good. Maybe you had a point. Sorry. So, just to, just, to, just to recap for two seconds. We've got the Fife Coastal and Countryside Trust, which, because of its nature of being arm's length, semi-detached as it were, uh, is able to call upon funding not just from Fife, but from elsewhere. Okay? But we're still left with the basic issue, which is that my impression is that many of you are not happy with the management of the Fife Coastal and Countryside Trust, mm -hmm. which is unrepresented here tonight. Unless, unless someone here represents it. No, 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 I want to ask a question. Yeah. Is, that, is that a correct mm -hmm. summary of, of the situation? Yeah. It is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Ultimately, the decision. Sorry, sorry, was, I'm sorry, my name is Tracy. Tracy? My name is Tracy McQueen. McQueen. Yeah. Ultimately, this decision has been made. The used two guys there were on the front page of the Times, irrespective of the politics and that, patting on the back, it's going to happen. It's a third. You just said there, the trust failed. But if this had went ahead, the used two guys are standing with the air on each other, it's gone ahead. So how are you used to use the trust field when he's in the Times a couple of weeks ago? We just want to again, why are you using that decision without uh, coming in? We're getting most on he says, she says. But can you want that a wee bit? Okay, okay, hold it. I, I can answer the lady's question. Eh? I make no mistake that I'm in total favour of any further development in this park. Eh? There's £1.8 million to run into the, into the Mideast. If for a local community to get £1.8 million is absolutely fantastic. In my eyes, without any doubt. And I asked you there about my 410 because I'm excited for the Mideast. I use the Mideast. I say for the Mideast. I run the Mideast. And, and the Mideast is a great place. And the reason that the Fife Coastal Country Trust has failed 
When I got a plane ticket to London, I advise you to go on. It was said that they would match for the £600,000, which they didn't match. We then went involved with the Benatti Astros and the Golf Trust to join, to join the project together, to receive management fees, which was something like £100,000, which is saving the project <coughs> to find deliver more for your money. We can only build down there the money that we've been put up to, to put in place to build the facility. Aye, we would love a bigger place, <coughs> a much bigger place. But I take back that it's a third of the size. I'm sure Gavin can come back on that, that's not the case. And, and also, Willie Clark, who's not here tonight, myself and Mark Hood, went to the leader of the council, who got another £300,000 to deliver the project. We also done a project on the old facility to, to see if it was worth repairing it, and it wasn't financially viable. And that's how the, the board then, about two and a half years ago, decided to, to build the new part. So that's why I stood in front of the, the five times the councillor who to say, aye, this is what we deliver now. And I'm still quite happy to deliver it. Yes, we're probably here tonight because it's not what we all want. It's not the colour and whatever else, eh? But I'm sure going forward we can discuss that. But we can only do what we've got. You go down to the lead and you're going to say, perhaps. I'm only saying, if you want to use that much, why you want to destroy it? I'm not destroying it. Far, far from 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 it. Far, far when the, the committee members there voted for to go on the trust, which was advised by the uh, Fife, uh, House Department and Fife House Democratic Services. Now, we're sitting listening here. This is one of the biggest assets that this area has. We've went, he's left, he's left, he's left. The simple fact is that we're all here tonight. That building, there was no communication. What we're hearing the night over the period that you should have had communication. <laughs> that, that, that is the problem. There was no communication. You just didn't follow the consultation guide plan, which is, which Fife Council adopted and took up. But you must be the the public, you have to put it actually online so that people can put their views and everything on. This is a total mess, without a doubt. You should get together, go through the procedures which is laid down by the consultation procedure and you wouldn't have had this mess today. As the man said, if it isn't a mess, it'll do until a real mess gets here. Yes, Peter. Yeah, <clears throat> I just want to make the point that there's no way that we want to destroy the, the Medes. In actual fact, what we are trying to do is uh, improve the Medes, make, make the, Medes, the Medes a much better place to visit, and actually turn the Medes into the centre point of the area, of the King Beath area. Now, I'm a King Beath councillor, but the reason I'm here today it's because, of, well, one, I was on the, the advisory board and didn't hear a lot. But the other thing was that we were going to use the medias as <clears throat> um, a way to bring more tourism into, into the area through getting off the train at Cowden Base, getting the bus down to the medias. Now, what would we come if we were going to make it, uh, if we were going to improve the medias? And the whole thing that we've been trying to do is to improve the medias. Now, I understand that the building isn't exactly what you were wanting, and it's not exactly what I was wanting either. But, but how is building that building improving the meeting? Because that building, that building improved the meeting. Or it, my understanding was... It just says you want to bring more people. It can't cope with you. Well, that, that, that's, that's all I mean, oh, that's, 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 that's the that That's the that Obviously, there's a, you know, there's, we, we've tapped into a rich vein of other sector of... of, of deep concern 
there's, there's still a point of information I think would be helpful for the rest of us to try and understand what's going on here. Who are the members of the five coastal and countryside trust? Who is on that trust? How, how, how are the people on the trust who clearly have <laughs> been rather asleep at the wheel, if I can use diplomatic language, mm -hmm. uh, how were these people appointed? Who appointed them? The trust, the, the, appointed the, trust. the trust. The trust appointed itself. Uh, well, the, <laughs> what happens is, is it's, uh, when, a, when a place becomes available, yeah. Yeah. when a place becomes available, then the board will uh, <coughs> look for a replacement. People can apply to, to become that replacement, and they'll be interviewed. <laughs> And we'll take the best candidate for that place. So, just a minute. The, 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 the five coastal. Hold on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. The five coastal and countryside trust effectively appoints itself. Who appoints these people? Who? who? Mr. Chairman, there's councillors on that trust. There are councillors on that trust. Oh, really? There's councillors on that trust. Why do you know that? Why do you know that? Who's on that trust? Why do you know that? Hold on a second, hold on a second. So, who are the councillors on the trust? We're on the advisory board. Since the trust is in so charge, I can tell you who, who all of them are. I know uh, one of them is. Um, uh, sorry, what you want? I think uh, uh, Leslie Laird is one of them. Uh, I think she's on. Sorry, Jim Young. Jim Young. But then there's. There's, it's, 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 it's represented by, right across the chamber of the council, so there'll be a number of councillors. So, it's probably on a website if you want to So, the second you get that information. So, hold on a second, please. So, my understanding is that the council appoints the, count, the countryside trust, is that right? No, the council Right, and other people are appointed by what process? My understanding through the board, the board yeah. the, 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 that core of the board then. So we are part of the board. Sorry. Thank you very much. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Hmm? right. Uh, you wanted names. Here are some names, and I'm indebted to you, madam. Sorry. Linda. Councillor. Uh, Stephen Carter, OBE, is chairman. Mr. William Taylor is board director and vice chair. Ms. Suzanne Roberts is from Keep Scotland Beautiful as Vice Chair, Councillor Alice McGarry, uh, Councillor Leslie Laird, Councillor Jim Young, Councillor Elizabeth Riches, <coughs> Dr Kath Lees from Scottish Natural Heritage, Mr David Somerville, Mr James Simpson, Mike Strachan from the Forestry Commission, Bruce Rollo and Robert Close. The councillors on uh, are, are Alice McGarry, Leslie Laird, Jim Young and, and Councillor Riches. So these were the people who were responsible for the chief executive. Is that right? So those are your names. You wanted names, you've got names. Okay. There were some questions. Yes, sir. Uh, James Glenn, I just want a clarification. You're saying that five councillors isn't responsible, that five councillors are their main shareholder? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Not? Yeah. So surely that bears some kind of responsibility for the decisions that you get. Absolutely. Is that true? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I think I mentioned that earlier on. Fife Council is the sole owner of the Fife Coast and Countryside Trust. That was in the So they do share responsibility for the decisions. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. More, more than share responsibility. Yeah, well, so what happens is that because it's an arm length organisation, there needs to be distance from hmm. the council. We can't be seen here. Of course. Be intervening. In so because other people's money is involved. Absolutely. Yeah. So what happens is we set them. I set a, a strategy or objectives okay. Okay. for that trust to reach, okay. and they've then got to go and okay. reach them. Uh, I think the question that must be in uppermost in people's minds was uh, that Ian has described a situation where the chief executive was resigning, it sounded to me like that's a couple of weeks or so, and the people in charge who were responsible for overseeing the management, right, uh, clearly uh, were comfortable with that. I think most people would have been very uncomfortable mm -hmm. with the thought that chief executive kept mm -hmm. resigning, changing, mm -hmm. whatever. So, so can I give you a wee bit of background what was going on at that point in time? Right. Mm -hmm. So a number of issues and concerns have been raised about the operation 
of faith, course, and concentrate trust. Prior to Amanda leaving, okay, we were failing with regards to this project. I think we spent quite a bit of money bringing in consultants uh, from, from the get-go. Uh, there was a number of issues in the park with the way that the park was being managed and operated. Uh, specifically around, if you look at the mountain bike trails, there was a number of issues at that point where I had to intervene on behalf of uh, the local bike club and the staff that were in the outdoor education facility because of the way that the park was being run and because of the way that the Coastal Country Tribe were operating. Is that the documented anyway? It will be in a series of emails that would have went back and forward between me and... That's very really helpful. That's very really helpful. Thank, Thank you very much. Much. Yes, sir. Hi there. Can I ask them the question, who was the main person or governing body who then enabled this to be pushed through or allowed through when there seems as though there's been a lot of sort of contradictories and a lot of failings on various parts of the process and also in relation to, is there evidence to suggest that the consultation process was adhered to? And if not, where does that leave us as a community? Because what we hear you saying, well, it was this one or it was that one, but it's us as the community that is having to carry the burden with this moving forward. And I suppose, we, are we in a process where this um, state of affairs may need to be um, stopped or... You know, pending investigations. Can we stop okay. this process? Thank, thank you very much. Is that okay? Uh, it's Diane, Diane De Plas. Diane De Plas. Thank you, Diane. Do you want a quick question? Uh, if I could just um, say something here. Uh, I was the representative on the advisory board for the NARTI Forum. And in that time, the first meeting that I ever went to was on the 24th of March 2015. I was invited to three, in total, one that I couldn't attend. And the last one I was at was on the 20th of January 2016. The minutes that were discussed for the, uh, at that meeting were from the 31st of July 2015. And I've never had a minute sent to me for the meeting on the 20th of January 2016. In fact, I've never had another thing sent to me. There's been no communication sent to me, or Peter, or anybody else that's sitting in here that was on that advisory board. Not a thing. And I've asked countless times what's happening with this committee. Why are we not getting invited along to these meetings? So why is it I've been allowed to be pushed through now? Well, well that's my question. Who's allowing that? Where have all these things... Where have they been discussed? Because they damn well weren't they discussed with us as members of the board. Yes, ma'am. My name's Eva Fellin. I read in the Courier today that there was extensive consultation regarding this monstrosity. Where and who was? Uh, well, in fairness, uh, the, uh, uh, David Ross, who made that statement, also went on to say that the consultation could have perhaps have been better. Yes, sir. So, your name is? My name's John Atkins, I work in construction and I work in a lot of sensitive areas. And we can't do nothing without informing communities, community groups, etc. Yeah, 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 yeah. And this is not happening. Yeah, and you sat, you sat there and you said, you, I, me, you've never as much as said we. We the people that are having that problem, we the people that are paying for that problem, we the people that are not being informed about nothing. <laughs> I can come back on that as well. I sat in advisory boards when, when they had on me, and I can assure you, I fought for this community to get these. And there's people on this board who were asking for some like £2,800 per square metre, which was absolutely scandalous. But come back to the next meeting, it was 800 quid. So I take back that I'm not working for this community because I can assure you, I done well am. Yes, there's been issues with consultation, and I'm hoping the guy at the end here can answer that because she's involved with the plan in the building. You know me, but let me make it no mistake. I certainly work hard for the, for the medias to be better than what it is. There's no mistake about that, like. Okay, thank you very much. Well, all, all the sector. Yes, all the sector. Yes, sir. I think the general feeling is that the community branches, this is going to go ahead 
Yeah. Uh, this, is there something you can do to hope that yes. I'm waiting for we've got more money? Try to get more money. Yeah. 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 Before, before I ask uh, Gavin to respond, if you're happy to do so, Gavin, I'd just like to point out in fairness <coughs> that, again, as the local paper points out today, uh, and I must be honest with you, when I read this act, it left some confusion with me, it says the planning application was published in May, right. and there hasn't been a single objection to it. Hold on a second. Uh, the planning applications go on the council website. It goes on the council website. Uh, there was uh, boards put up in the centre. The Benarty, I should the Benarty Library as well. No, there was no, no, there was no, there wasn't. They were handed in by our department. No, just to answer your question. Yeah, what's that? Uh, the chairman of the, the, the centre, and just tonight before I come down here, I went and spoke to the lady, Linda, who runs at the library. Never handed in. Oh, I'm Never have been. Yes, I made the bit of If there's somebody who finds council putting statements in the paper that are not true, they should be held accountable. Well, 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 let's not accuse anyone of telling lies. What, 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 I'm, I'm what the all the Benarty Community Council. That has to come through Benarty Community Council. Absolutely. That, we've never seen it. Never it has seen to. It never came we've never seen, seen it. The chairman's sitting up there. Thank you, sir. Thank he you. Could either deny it. Thank you. Or you, you made your point. Can I ask Gavin? Uh, is that the case that the community council need to uh, see or approve? We all uh, the request was to exhibit in the Benarty Centre. So my colleague, on the day he opened up the boards with you in the uh, Board Centre, he handed them in, but it was not. My, my specific question is: Does or does not the community council need to have sight or approve such a such a We're only requested to make sure they're exhibited in public areas. I understand. So I'm asking a different question. A different question. Is, is it, is it, under planning rules and five councils' planning rules, is it a requirement that the community council have sight of no. or approve yes. yeah, the planning application? On, hold yes. a second. A planning application of this nature. That probably comes through the planning department. Yes. Right. Yeah. That is, that is, hold, on, hold on a second. Hold on a second. So, we have a situation here where someone is saying, who's on the community council, the that they, hold on a second, they have not had sight. Have you had sight of it, sir? I'm chairman Stephen Adam, chairman of the Communications. And have you seen? Last the communication we've seen about the floor plan in a September meeting when Ian produced a floor plan to us. I've seen nothing since, and we get all the planning ups in this area on a weekly basis. There's been nothing on your website that came to me from the. the okay. Okay. Thank you very much, sir. <laughs> Terry, can you just. Uh, Gavin, can you tell us what the situation is uh, in terms of the regulations? Well, it, it, has there been a breach of the regulations here? Uh, we don't actually do the notifications. It's the, I understand it's the planning that. department. I understand and, uh, if the they planning, obviously if the, have... Let me ask you a successful <laughs> question. Yes, yeah. uh, it's one of the six <coughs> Theoretically, theoretically, if it is a requirement that the community council yeah. does have yeah, sight... They should be notified if it's a yeah, requirement, yeah. yes. And if that has not happened, <coughs> what is the situation in that? I'd have to check what the technicalities of that aspect of well, that. I mean, <laughs> either, it's, either it's a rule or it isn't a rule. Yeah. If it is a rule, it's a breach. Obviously, mm -hmm. we sent that. Uh, I'm not out of there are regulations in the distance okay. from a regular no. planning site. And you're not planning. Okay. Planning. Okay. I can tell you how far afield is that will cover the whole site, right. for example. So I'll just say, yes, the, any community council is a statutory consultee right, right. of the planning process. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any planning applications come forward in the yeah. community, yeah. that are on the local bulletin that comes issued on a Monday morning yes. that goes out to all statutory consultees. Okay. So if the community council are saying that they didn't receive it, there's a problem because they should have received it. And what's the answer to the problem? So I, I don't know why they wouldn't have received it. Hold on a second, sir. Hold on a second. If the chairman is telling us, and I have no reason to doubt him, that the community council did not, was not consulted as the regulations require, what is the recourse there? Well, we, we need to find out if that is the case. Well, we well, well it's 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 the first case! We are absolutely sure that... Well, it's absolutely sure. Oh, it's in here. No, no, can I ask? Because it's an automated process. This happens every week. So it's 
Have you put a, a, set of, a planning application on no, the No, with respect. With respect. No, but, I'm, I'm not saying that anybody's lying, I'm saying that well, may have been a problem. It sounds a wee bit like that. But they're not well, 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 Hold on a second, please. Yeah. I'm asking you a different question, which is if it transpires that the community council were not consulted as the regulations require, what, does, what impact, if any, does that have on the planning application? Well, obviously, it's open to objection, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was objective. Objective. Hold on a second. Hold on a second.